Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining this Frequently Asked Questions session. My name is Peter Pereira, and I'm a broadcast media production student at Montgomery College. And just like many of you out there, I have a lot of questions about what the school year is going to be like. And that's exactly why we are here today. We'll be talking about we, what we need to know about taking classes at MC this coming semester, fall 2020. And now let me introduce our guests with us today. They are Michael Mills, Tanya Mason, Ernest Cartledge, and Melissa Gregory. If you don't mind, please introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what you do at MC. Let's start with Michael. Hi, thanks, Peter. I'm Michael Mills, Vice President of eLearning, Innovation, and Teaching Excellence at Montgomery College. I oversee our staff and faculty professional development and oversee our online learning. Hi, Peter. I'm Tanya Mason, and I am the College-wide Dean for Student Success in Rockville Student Affairs and I am responsible for a number of uh, offices on campus, including counseling, disability support services, the combat to college program for veterans, also the first year experience. We also have a federal grant called the Student Support Services TRIO program. So, but I am also responsible for other student affairs um, offices on my home campus at Rockville. Thank you, Tanya. Good afternoon, Peter. I'm Ernest Cartledge, Director of Records and Registration and College Registrar. I'm responsible for areas such as registration, course scheduling, degree evaluation, and veteran certification. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Melissa Gregory. I'm the Associate Senior Vice President for Student Affairs, and I work in a lot of areas of student affairs. I um, supervise the scholarship office and the financial aid office. And we also have a federal TRIO funded program, a grant funded program called the Educational Opportunity Center that helps a variety of students with enrollment issues, scholarship issues, applying for college, different kinds of things to help them get started. All right, great. It looks like we have a rock star lineup uh, for today's uh, frequently asked questions session. So just as a reminder for everybody, um, we want to hear your questions. So since we are going live, please um, go to the comment section of whichever platform you're using to watch us and, and post your questions. We'll do our best to answer them. And uh, if we don't have an answer for you right now, don't worry. We'll definitely get back to you at a later time. So let's get started. Michael, you're first up. So tell us what online classes are going to be like, because I've heard the terms uh, structure, remote and uh, distance learning. Can you tell us what, uh, what the difference between these labels are? Sure. Um, online classes will have the same academic rigor as face-to-face -face classes. Uh, students are engaged with classmates and their professors through discussion boards, email, chat sessions, and tests and assignments are submitted in those platforms. As for the difference between structured remote and distance learning, the difference is quite simple. Distance learning refers to those courses that are fully online. They allow students to learn independently on their own schedules and they meet specific deadlines and complete assignments. Instructors guide students through the lessons and activities of the class. Structured remote classes are scheduled for specific days and at specific times. Students meet at a class remotely through Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate, and instructors will tell the students which software that they're going to use. In the class schedule, students will see specific times and campus locations for those classes that are identified as structured remote, but they're not going to go to the campus. They're going to meet at that specific time through Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate. 
And for more information, they can always go to the Montgomery College website and it outlines the differences there as well. Perfect. Thank you for that answer. And while we're talking about classes or what classes will be like this semester, I want to point everybody to a video we recently published where professors uh, talk about how they'll be teaching classes this coming semester. So if you're wondering what you'll be do or how you'll be doing an experiment in a chemistry class or or if you simply want more information on the formats of these classes, um, I encourage you to look up for our video on our YouTube page and uh, social media platforms. Um, that uh, video is called, How Will Classes Be Taught at MC During the Fall Semester of 2020? And now let's move on to our next question. Um, Tonya, you're up next. So um, tell us what kind of classes will be held in person? And um, if I am going to attend one of these face-to-face -face sessions, am I required to wear a mask? Sure. So first of all, I just want to reemphasize that the vast majority of the classes are going to be held remotely, whether it's distance learning or structured remote, as um, Mike Mills described. There are a few classes that have some hands-on components that do have a requirement for some face-to-face -face work. So for example, automotive technology. So um, there will be some selected times and dates that the faculty members will communicate to students when they are scheduled to come physically to campus. But again, the vast majority of that work will be done remotely. Um, in the schedule, it will show which classes have this um, potential component. So things like I said, automotive technology, some of the health science classes where again, they have some more hands-on work, some other labs that have hands-on work. Um, but you will receive instruction from your faculty members who don't show up on the first day of classes, but you'll receive a communication from your um, instructor letting you know when you would have to come on the campus, um, specific locations, specific room numbers and specific dates and times. As far as the masks, yes, we will and we will make sure that we're enforcing all social distancing requirements. And again, your faculty member will let you know what is expected of you, but when you are on campus, you will be required to have some kind of face covering on. Again, the details of which, depending on the kind of class you have, that information should be shared uh, with your faculty member. Great. So we just need to uh, be on the lookout on information from our professors about specifics for each class. That's great. So Ernest, uh, I'm going next to you and um, tell me if I uh, am on a waiting list for a uh, class at MC, um, how will I know I've been accepted to that class? Thank you, Peter. Certainly. Um, and here I want to stress the importance of checking your MC email frequently, definitely daily, sometimes even multiple times per day. If you're on the wait list for a course, you will be notified via MC email. And at this point, you'll have 24 hours to confirm it. So 24 hours from the point that you receive that notice that you've been accepted to the course, you have to officially go in and confirm it and add it to your schedule. So again, please check your email frequently. Uh, if you get a course from a wait list, you will be notified via your MC email. Great. Thank you so much for that. And uh, next, uh, we have uh, Melissa. And I, I think you are the numbers person in this group. And uh, so I have a question for you, which is, uh, if I have been accepted to um, another college for the fall, and um, I'd, um, I applied um, for financial aid there, but then I have a change of heart and I decide to go to MC instead, can I still apply for financial aid at MC? Oh, absolutely, you can do that. We have a lot of students in that situation. So if you did your free application for federal student aid and you had it sent to another school and you finished the process with them, but now you've made a change in your decision and you want to come to Montgomery College, uh, it's very easy to go out to the federal site at FAFSA.gov, that's F-A-F-S-A.gov, 
and add the school code for Montgomery College, which is 00691100. And then in a few days, we get your results and we can start working on it. And you'll know when we receive it, because when you're admitted to MC, we use a portal, MyMC. And you go out there and there's a tab for financial aid. And when you click it, right in the middle of the page, everything we need from you is going to be there. And we'll be able to start processing financial aid for you. So it's certainly possible for us to, to make that change. The financial aid you're getting from another school doesn't necessarily transfer to Montgomery College. Some things will be the same. Um, for example, if you were eligible for a Pell Grant, you'll be able to get it at Montgomery College too. Uh, but we'll ask for other documentation, other forms from you, and it's all going to be out on that portal. So if it's something that you're considering, you should do it right away because school will be starting soon. Great, thank you. And let me uh, piggyback on that since we already are getting uh, a number of uh, questions. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Again, we're going live, so if you have questions, go to the uh, comment section of whichever platform you're using, post your questions, and we'll try to answer them right now. So uh, I'm going to go back to Melissa, because I think this question is uh, relevant, uh, at least to what you were just uh, talking about. Um, it's, a, it's a question from Jasmine, and she says, will I be able to go to my online classes even after I'm still waiting for a financial aid offer? <laughs> Yes, you will, depending on your situation. So if you've submitted all of your financial aid forms to us, one of those forms was something you signed. We call it a reservation form. And that holds your place in classes while we're processing your financial aid. So depending on when you turn things in, we might still be working on everything. And that's fine. You need to go to class. So if we're holding your place in classes, while you're, um, while we're still processing everything and ensuring what kind of financial aid you're going to be able to get, it's very important that you start your classes on time, you do your classes and do all of your assignments so that we can catch up with you. Great, thank you. And thank you, Jasmine, for that question. Um, I I'm gonna go back to Michael and uh, address a question I have here from uh, Hannah Molly. Um, she says, um, how will the professors give out their assignments when in-person class assignments are usually on paper? Great question. Thank you for that. Uh, they'll be sending them through email or they'll be posting them in our learning management system, which is Blackboard. Uh, professors have been trained over the course of the summer on how to do that. And we trained almost 700 faculty this summer on structured remote teaching. We have a number of other faculty who are already trained. So they'll be using Blackboard to its fullest capability and posting the assignments that way and giving you instructions on how to submit the assignments through Blackboard as well. Great, thank you. And um, maybe, um, I, I'm not sure if this is a, a, a Tanya question. Um, but you guys, I'm sure, uh, will take it. Um, this question is, let me see, from Peter, but not this Peter, another Peter, I believe. It says, when and how will we get instructions to begin online? Uh, will professors email us access info? Uh, this is, uh, oh no, from Alicia. So I guess the question Alicia is saying that. Uh, maybe uh, Ernest or uh, Tanya? Actually, I think it's probably a good question for Michael. Okay. Sure. That, thanks, Tanya. Uh, students will have access to their courses in Blackboard about a week before the semester starts. So I would encourage you to log into the portal, MyMC, check, click on that Blackboard icon, and look for your courses. Faculty will post instructions there on how to access either Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate. And then also, as Ernest had said earlier, continue to check your Montgomery College email address for instructions from faculty there as well. Perfect. Yeah, I think we answered a uh, question also from TDW who was saying that um, he or she can't see any of her classes on Blackboard yet. Uh, yet. So uh, just be on the lookout for uh, emails. 
and uh, you'll 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 get um, uh, those answers from your professors in in due time. Um, let me ask, um, since we have a few facilities uh, asking questions about what will be open, let me uh, uh, talk to Ernest next and, and, and tell us what MC facilities and buildings are, are open and how will that be um, managed, how, will, how it will be managed during the fall. Thank you, Peter. So access to MC buildings and facilities is restricted right now. Uh, the library, computer labs, and all athletics facilities, including our athletic facilities outdoors, are closed. Classrooms that have in-person labs are only open to students in those classes. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let's go to a number, another number question for Melissa. Melissa, does MC have scholarships? Oh, Montgomery College has a lot of scholarships. We have scholarships through the institution. Um, we also have the Montgomery College Foundation that has um, hundreds of scholarships students can apply for. Now, what you would need to do is go out to our um, Montgomery College website under Paying for College, and there's a tab for scholarships. And you'll find the application for the Montgomery College Foundation scholarships. One thing you're going to see is it had a priority deadline back at the end of June. And that's very typical that schools have priority deadlines. That's when we want you to, um, we'd like people to apply by those deadlines. But we're still taking applications. We never know when there'll be a scholarship that comes in and we haven't been able to find a person that's a match. And you could be that person. So we do want you to apply. Or it could be that we'll find a scholarship for you for spring. Uh, the amounts of our scholarships range from anywhere from $250 to $2,500 for the academic year. So it's something that you, you really want to consider. Um, it's never too late to apply, never too late to apply for financial aid during the academic year, but also for scholarships. Great. Thank you for that answer. Uh, I think we, we might have just answered uh, Iverson's, Iverson's question. Uh, who was uh, saying how to apply for financial aid. So thank you for that, mm -hmm. Melissa. Um, I wanna go to Tanya next. And uh, and I think this is something I kind of struggle with, uh, which is, uh, do I have to keep my webcam on during classes? And um, what if I just, uh, I feel like I have 70s hair and I feel uncomfortable in front of the camera, Tanya? Okay, that's a good one. Um, so you really, this is a communication with the, the faculty member about what's expected for their class. Um, I personally feel like you wanna be engaged and it is helpful to be on camera, but your faculty member will tell you what those expectations are. I would just say one um, word of caution though, be aware of what's going on in the background of your camera as well. Sometimes we've got things going on and sometimes we do have 70s, 80s, or some other decade hair that's not the 2020s, and we might not want to be on camera that day, or maybe we weren't feeling 100% that day. Um, and I would just say maybe send a quick message to your professor and let them know, hey, I'm here, I am engaged. Um, when I'm on Zoom calls, um, sometimes I've got to step away for a second to pick up something, and I might turn my camera off so that it's not distracting to the other members of the class or to the professor. Um, but generally you want to have either a picture up, your name pop up so that the faculty member knows you are still there and that you are still engaged and connected. I think we're all learning new ways as far as etiquette um, with the Zoom meetings. And so, again, I would just say check in with your professor and, and make sure that they're aware of what's going on for you. But good question. Perfect. Yeah. 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 That's, that's great. Uh, so guidelines from professors is what we need to go by. Uh, and maybe this is, uh, we're, we're in a new normal, right? This is quarantine hair. Uh, um, so I apologize yeah. to the viewers. And again, encourage everybody who is uh, watching this uh, live, go to the comments uh, sections and uh, post your questions where we're answering them as, as best as we can. So I'd like to ask something that I think is important. Um, and and this, this question is for Ernest. Um, 
are laptops available uh, available to borrow by students or or faculty since we're everything we're doing uh, these days is remote Ernest sure so unfortunately, Peter, we currently don't have a laptop loaner system for students. Uh, we are researching how to uh, assist students with the technology needs going forward. Uh, faculty and staff and administrators can request a loaner laptop through IT. Uh, the MC Foundation also has a limited amount of funding and equipment to provide laptops to students in need. Uh, students who qualify for CARES Act funding uh, and receive the funding can also use those funds to purchase a computer or a laptop when those funds are dispersed in this academic year. All right. So um, just apply for that financial aid and, and, and make sure you, you use that money uh, then to, to get a laptop. Um, I believe the next question is, is a Michael question. And uh, correct me if I'm not uh, right, but Fekadu um, uh, asks, how do we get lab materials for a lab class like anatomy class? That's a great question. And um, the the answer is going to de depend, I think, on the specific discipline and the, speci the specific class. Um, but my understanding is that they'll be mailed out through the bookstore or available through the bookstore. But I would consult with the department uh, for a, a specific answer on that question. Each discipline is going to be doing things a little bit differently, I believe. Excellent, thank you, Michael. And uh, we'll go, uh, the next question I, um, I'm i guessing is a Melissa question. Melissa, um, Therese says, there was a required sign up genius for financial literacy schedule session, but now it is closed. How can I complete my financial aid requirements? Um, she's probably referring to the sessions that we have for students that want to apply for student loans. And at, at this time of the year, as we get closer to the beginning of classes, the sessions fill up very quickly. So you need to keep checking the web to see the new sessions that we open up. So the one you might have been trying to get into is closed, but we'll have more sessions coming on. And they, they become more frequent in the next couple of weeks as students are getting ready to come back to school. So there will be other sessions. If the one that you were trying to get into is closed, there's going to be sessions that will be added. So um, just check back on the web to see when more are available. Excellent, thank you. Just be on the lookout for that. Next question comes from um, King Yat Hat on Instagram. And um, I think this would be uh, a good question for Tanya to answer. What is the best way to contact the library and or access the library resources? Um, we're having a little bit of a difficulty with, uh, hold on one second, Tanya, we can hear you. Oh, there fault. we go. Okay, no problem, uh, okay. thank you. Um, so I'm sorry, what I was saying is it's a good question. So um, physically, all of the buildings are closed except in the occasions when uh, a class is going to meet one of those lab classes or hands-on classes that I described earlier. But other support resources are going to be working remotely. And so the library will not be open. And I think uh, Mr. Cartledge also indicated this. The library will not be physically open, but they have done some wonderful things on the website to make sure that resources are available to students electronically. So if you go to our webpage and just type in library, it will connect you to the library's site. And there you can find access to all sorts of things. I think one of the I don't work for the libraries, but one of the fantastic things about them is that they have had already prior to the coronavirus and our, and our uh, move to remote work, they would already moved a lot of resources online to make them readily accessible to students 24 seven. And so um, they've got some great links there. So I would say go to that website and see what's available to you. All right, thank you very much uh, for that answer. I have uh, the next question, I'm not sure who should take it, but um, is uh, it was asking if we are going to, will there be 
any jobs at school, uh, Mahider, um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, is asking, will there be any jobs at school? Um, I could probably answer that one. Um, there will be jobs at school, but it's going to be limited. We have a federal work study program, and that's money through the federal government. We are still placing students in federal work study jobs. We've worked with different supervisors around the college to make sure these are jobs students can do remotely. And because we have to document that they can be supervised and that, that, you, that you're, you're working the number of hours and those kinds of things. But the federal work study program has not been canceled. We are going to be able to hire students through that program. We have another employment program where we hire student assistants on, on campus. Um, and for now, we will not be able to hire student assistants. So our student program um, will be pretty much the federal work study program through the fall. And then we'll have to look and see what happens in the spring. Awesome. Thank you for that, Melissa. Um, I have a question now from uh, Natania. She asks, she says that she borrowed a calculator from the math center last uh, spring, and she's uh, wondering how she can return it. Hmm. I'll let Mike Anybody? take that. Well, <laughs> thanks. I, I don't know about the, the calculators, but I do know that the library is set up time uh, after the first week of classes for students to return textbooks or books that they've borrowed in the, the spring semester. So um, I'm going to speak for the libraries here. If uh, she'll return the calculator on the specified day um, for the libraries, then we'll get the calculator back to the Math Learning Center. Awesome. Thank you for that, Michael. And um, let's see, we got a few questions that are coming in that uh, we've already answered. Uh, one of them is uh, whether um, uh, to wear a mask and keep social distancing for in-person classes. We already answered that and the answer is yes. And uh, But just wait uh, for your professor to reach out um, in regards to specific for uh, specifics for each class, okay? So you'll get guidelines from your professors in regards to um, all the uh, uh, all these safeguards uh, to put uh, to put in place. Now, um, let me see. We've got uh, another Melissa question. Melissa is pretty popular. I think uh, money moves the world sometimes. So oh, it should be love, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it says, um, this is from Edith, and she says, if my financial aid is denied, can I withdraw from the class without having to pay it? You can withdraw from the class at, with a full refund until the class, uh, and actually Ernest is going to have to help me with this, uh, mm. as long as you withdraw by the first day of classes, is that it, Ernest? The first day, in some cases too, but definitely the first day. If you withdraw before before the first day or by the first day of class, you'll get a full refund. Yeah, because if you go past that point, you're going to owe the tuition. So it's pretty quick. You'd have to make a, a decision. In terms of being denied financial aid, though, it depends on what you were eligible for. So if you're saying I didn't get any grants, I didn't get any scholarships, I was only offered loans, you should also think about if you applied for aid and you did that form, and you probably might remember you did that form based on income that you and your family had a couple of years ago. If things have changed, and your income has changed, and your situation has changed, you need to talk to us and give us information about that. I know that's really challenging right now because the phones are very, very busy, and of course our offices and front counters are not physically open, but we have doubled the number of people on the phone, if you're patient, you, you will get through, and we do have financial aid counselors managing that. So there is still the possibility if you are um, eligible for federal aid, so you, you meet the qualifications, but maybe you're eligible for loans, not Pell, um, Pell Grants. We are also going to be giving out some federal money, some federal CARES grant money, 
after school begins. So that might be a possibility for you to get refunded for some of that as well. And also think about using our payment plan so you don't have to pay everything right away. You make a payment, you can structure your payments over a period of time. And that's out on the website under paying for college. So there are a lot of different things you might consider before dropping the class. Excellent, that's a, a lot of good information in there, Melissa, thank you. We have a question from Jasmine and she wants to know more about the uh, Maryland Transfer Advantage Program and when the deadline is. Hmm. Yeah. So, so I don't know if the deadline so off the top. I'm sorry, Ernest, I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately I would have to research the deadline, but in general, the Transfer Advantage Program is a program that we have uh, primarily with the University of Maryland College Park that allows students to attend one course there at a discounted rate. Um, so if you could uh, give me your email or if we can get your email somehow, I'll reach out to you with that information. Great, thank you. Yeah, we'll make sure we um, note down this, uh, this answer to, um, or this question rather, um, to answer later. So it's from Jasmine. Um, somebody is monitoring this and maybe we can get back to her whether through um, whichever platform she's she's writing us through. Um, and uh, we go back to, um, let me see, the other uh, question I have is from Yipin. And, uh, and again, I apologize if I mispronounce names. Uh, my last name gets mispronounced all the time, so I sympathize with you. Um, so uh, Yipin is saying, I only have one last class in fall, in the fall, which is math, and then I'm done, and I apply for graduation. Now, I need official transcript for, uh, uh, to apply for transferring. Should I, should I wait for my very last class to be over? Sure, I'll take that one. So thank you for the question. So actually, um, that's the best practice. You could request it right now once the fall semester starts and request that it be held until grades are posted or until your degree is posted. Um, however, I would recommend that you wait till a little closer to the end of the semester, um, especially once you know how you're performing in the course, uh, then go online to my MC, make the request and make sure you check the box that says hold for a degree. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so let me see. Um, the next question comes from uh, Lori, and uh, she's saying, um, were there or will there be trainings for uh, learning disabled students, uh, like in the challenge program, for how to use Zoom or other online class requirements, or, or will that be up to the instructor? So I can, me, I can take that, that from the... Uh, um, from the Digital Learning Center perspective, they will be offering training to students on Zoom and Blackboard Collaborate, not necessarily specific to a specific population, but students in general will have access to Zoom and Blackboard Collaborate training through the Digital Learning Centers, and they can check the uh, MyMC portal for information on how to access that. Thank so you, Peter, Michael. I would also just add the other question. Of, yes. Oh, yes. Please go ahead, Tanya. Sorry, I just wanted to add a piece in terms of the specific population um, students with disabilities. So the student mentioned the challenge program in particular, and so I would say if there's some specific questions about that, you may want to reach out to Carla Neighbors. Her last name is spelled N-A-B-O-R-S. Um, she is connected to that program. She's responsible for that program. Um, but in general, there's also a orientation that's set up, a uh, new uh, to DSS orientation that's set up next week, Wednesday, Wednesday at 11 a.m. And I would suggest that the student, I don't know if they're going to be taking credit or non-credit classes. The challenge program is a non-credit program, but you may want to go ahead and RSVP for that event to gather some more information about what we do in DSS. Um, you do need to RSVP. So you would go to 
the Montgomery College website, type in DSS. And then when you go to that web page, you will see an, uh, some information. Um, there's a little box there that talks about this program that will be held next week. And you click on it and you can go ahead and do your registration for that event. You do need to pre-register, they'll send you the link. So that might be another avenue to get some additional information about what to expect at the college with respect to DSS. Great, thank you for adding that. So the name of the person is Carla Neighbors, right? Uh, that's for the uh, yeah. challenge program that you mentioned. So that's for you, Laurie. Um, next question is uh, from Daniela. And she says, I received a scholarship from an outside organization and I just requested they send us, uh, and I just requested they send a sponsor authorization to Montgomery College. Do I have to inform the financial aid office of my award? Well, actually, um, outside checks from um, other organizations for scholarships are handled through our business services office. Uh, you can email the scholarship office and let them know you're receiving the scholarship and they'll try to find out if the sponsored billing um, paperwork got to the business services office so that they're aware that they're going to be posting this. Also, if you could leave your name and, and M number with someone so that we can follow up because we need to ask folks if they received that paperwork. If something's coming through the mail right now, it's a little bit slower. We are picking up our mail. We are processing our mail. So we have checks coming in from other organizations and other paperwork that's coming in. Um, but we're not there every day doing it. So if you leave your name, if you give us your M number, we can try to make sure that someone has the connection and, um, and we can find that paperwork. And I also wanted to update on something. Someone else was asking about the financial literacy sessions. And we've switched over to using the Federal Student Aid Online Financial Aid Awareness Training. If, as long as people have done that, we pick that up from the federal site. So we're talking about the loan sessions that we were doing. And right now we're using the Federal Student Aid Online Financial Aid Awareness Training. So um, doing that and completing your loan information form that's we're going to keep going forward and processing your loan. So that's just a little update on a question someone asked earlier about the financial literacy sessions. Perfect. Thank you, Melissa. Um, let me see the next question. So we, we have a few people, um, a couple of people. We have uh, um, Kathleen and also Haha who are asking about how do they find out um, or how do they know what materials are needed for their classes? Maybe Michael. I can, um, can I, help us out. Sure. Uh, when they register, there they should see some of that information in the class notes um, of the registration system. But they'll also have access to the syllabus, and they can they can check the the syllabus. The other thing they can do is go through the bookstore website and check to see what resources the faculty member is asking them to purchase, or in some cases, they may be open educational resources and they just have to download the material online. And Michael, since I have you right here, um, I have a, a, a question, a kind of a follow-up from uh, Nathania, who's uh, asking if discussion boards will be required for all classes. Uh, faculty use them in different ways. So it, it's not required in, in all of the classes. Uh, some of the faculty members use them to further engage the students in discussing topics that were covered in, in a lecture or previous discussion. Uh, so not every faculty member uses them to the fullest extent um, possible. Some use them just to have students introduce themselves, uh, but it's all dependent on the faculty member and the specific class. And you'll get those instructions early on in the semester. Great, thank you, Michael. Uh, Tanya, I just want to go back to you for a second because Lori says thank you uh, for that information we gave on the uh, on the challenge program, and she says if we can, well, rather if you uh, can repeat the training dates and times for uh, the students. Sure. So um, 
again, this was a orientation for DSS. I think uh, Mike Mills was talking about uh, ways in which students could get information about training to use Zoom. Um, but this was specific, specifically for the Disability Support Services Program. And all you have to do is just go to our webpage, the Montgomery College webpage, type in DSS, go to that site's uh, homepage, and there'll be some information. But the event is on Wednesday, the 26th of August, 11 to 12. You do need to go onto the website and RSVP. And so um, they will send you a link so you'll be able to get in. So you have to be invited to be able to participate in um, this program and you just have to RSVP by clicking the link. So it is next week on the 26th. Great, thank you. Um, and I believe this is probably for Melissa. Uh, Kathleen is asking, is it too late to apply for the uh, Maryland College Promise Scholarship? Yes, for this year, it's too late to apply. If you're a recent high school graduate, you may apply for next year. But the deadline to apply um, is usually March 1st. I think they had extended that a little bit this year uh, because of circumstances. But um, it's something you might want to consider for next year. Okay, great. And um, I don't know if this is a, 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 a new subject, Melissa, uh, where um, a couple have asked about uh, finding out more information on uh, MTAP or MTAP? I think sure, that's the that, Transfer Advantage Program, isn't it? Oh, that's yes, correct. Yes, yes. That's the, yes, yes, that's the Maryland Transfer Advantage Program. And yeah. we also have uh, the website on the MC website. If you search transfer opportunities, you'll get a great website with all the transfer opportunities and institutions that we have. Uh, plans with, transfer plans with, including MTAP. Um, so go to MC, Montgomery College website, and just put in transfer opportunities, and that should come up for you. Awesome. Thank you, Ernest. It looks like uh, you stole the sun, and the sun is inside your room now. Uh, <laughs> we're having some visual things uh, with your uh, feed going on. But it looks Ernest, good. It looks Ernest really is good. a bright, shining star. <laughs> that is right. Thank that you, is Melissa. Right. Okay, so um, next question. Let's see. Um, Matthew is asking about having been to Blackboard and uh, not having displayed, uh, not seeing any of his classes display. Um, and I think we some of these uh, questions we already answered earlier on, but maybe these uh, these viewers are, are are coming on board now. So let's try and answer them um, again, if we don't mind. Um, so. Uh, He's saying that he doesn't see any of his uh, classes display on Blackboard and will they automatically be put on uh, their account at school starts or um, does he have to sign up uh, for, for Blackboard himself? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, faculty are still in their courses working on them, getting, ready that, getting them ready for the fall semester. So students don't have access yet at this point, but they will have access about a week before the semester starts. So I would encourage students uh, beginning uh, one week prior to the start of the semester to log into MyMC, click on that Blackboard icon, and start to look for the courses in which they are enrolled. If it gets closer to the start of the semester and they still don't see them, then they should call the college. Awesome, thank you, Michael, for that. Um, let me um, address another question from uh, Shayel. He says, I'm in a dual enrollment uh, program, I guess, and I don't understand how to get my textbooks and my Blackboard says I am not enrolled uh, in a class. So that goes Anybody? back to what Mike was just stating. Yeah, that goes back to what Mike was just stating, that faculty members are still working on their courses right now. So that's probably why the student is seeing that. Um, as far as the textbooks, again, um, if you go to the website and, and search your course, uh, you'll see the list of books that are necessary there. Or you can, as Mike said as well, search the bookstore website um, and find your course, and you'll see the textbooks that are required. Great. Thank so, you, Ernest. 
Yes. Peter, I'd like to add something to that. Also, because the students said they're in the dual enrollment program, they may want to reach out to the dual enrollment folks mm -hmm. um, to make sure, because some things they have resources and support specifically for that population. I just want to make sure that they're not missing out on things they're supposed to be getting from that program. So I would recommend that they, um, you can again, look it up on the website and see um, contact information for that program. Good call. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you for that. Um, now we've got a couple of other people asking, uh, Jasmine and Kelly, they want to know where they can uh, check the uh, classes syllabus, uh, syllabi, I guess, if it is plural. Well, once the uh, classes are available in Blackboard, the syllabus will be posted there. Uh, they can also reach out to the department itself and, and see if they have a generic syllabus that they may be able to provide the students prior to the start of the semester. Cool. Thank you, Michael. And uh, I think uh, this is actually one of the questions we, um, we were going to talk about, but somebody's actually asking it. Uh, Fecado is saying, last time while uh, I was taking a time sensitive exam, my internet um, kind of acted up and got disconnected and uh, I didn't finish my exam, then I got a bad, bad grade. And uh, how can I manage uh, this for the future? I would encourage students to check the Montgomery College Foundation website. There's a list there of a number of uh, affordable internet provider solutions. Uh, one, for example, is offering students who qualify $10 a month of internet access. So I would check the Montgomery College Foundation website for that information for reliable internet providers. Thank you. So there you have it. Um, let me see. Next, uh, we've got a, a question from Sarah. She says, I registered for an English 101 course a little late, uh, like last week, and uh, now I'm waiting to be notified to complete additional steps. Is it likely for them not to enroll me because I register late? Hmm. So I'll take that one. Mm. So no, if you're officially registered and we're talking about for the fall semester, uh, you should be fine. If it's officially on your schedule and you were able to get into it with no problem, you should be fine. Um, again, check your email daily. You, you, maybe you missed what they may have sent you already, um, but if they're asking for any additional steps such as assessment or what have you, um, you should be okay if you are officially in the course. If you were saying you're requesting permission for the course, that's a different subject. Um, but again, if you are in the course, it's on your schedule, you should be fine. Great. Thank you for that, Ernest. And Jasmine says, I really benefited and enjoy structured remote courses this uh, summer semester. That's great. Uh, as a working adult, I benefit greatly from the convenience. Will this option stay in place after COVID versus uh, online option? Oh, that's music to Michael's ears. <laughs> so, right. So we, we continue to expand our fully online course offerings. And one of the things that we're looking at post COVID is how do we take this structured remote teaching and make it more of a permanent type of modality and course delivery method for students. So it is something that's on our radar and we, we hear what you're saying about the convenience. Thank you for that. And uh, Idali uh, was asking in Spanish, uh, ¿Cómo hace para inscribirse? And I'm going to go off a little bit of script here and tell Idali que eh, el próximo martes a las 2 de la tarde vamos a estar haciendo la misma sesión de preguntas y respuestas en español. Así que si quieres esperar uh, hasta el martes que viene, eh, te voy a decir exactamente la fecha. El martes que viene es el 25 de agosto. Vamos a estar haciendo eh, la misma sesión en español, así que te veremos entonces. And now back to our regular programming. Um, uh, we have a question from Kiru Bell, who says, I just applied for new students uh, to take a placement test. Is that possible to start class for fall 2020? 
So I'll, I'll take that one. So um, I'm not sure which placement test the person is talking about, but our assessment centers are not physically open. Um, as we indicated earlier, all of the buildings are closed. So I'm not sure what level of assessment the student is, is trying to complete, um, but I would say that we've done a variety of things. First of all, we always still have SAT, ACT scores if you have those scores. We have alternate placements. Um, where we'll use high school GPA, um, high school English and math. Uh, we do have an online placement for our math testing. And then for English and those who are second language students who need to assess their English skills, those departments, so the English department and um, the English language program department are assessing students. Um, and you would want to contact them to find out the steps involved for that. What you need to do, though, is just go to the assessment web page and there is a ton of information. Scroll down and it will show you details about what these alternative assessment forms are and what you have to do to establish them. So without knowing more specific details about you and your individual situation, um, just a lot of detail is on that site. There's information about math, about English, English as a second language, and also um, the chemistry, because there's a placement test for that as well. So I will direct the student to the Assessment Center website. Assessment Center website. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, just letting you uh, all know that we are under uh, 10 minutes uh, until the end of uh, this uh, frequently asked question um, session. And uh, we, we still have a few more questions to cover. Um, there is a question from Robert. And he says, who can I email about an outside organization scholarship? And I think this is probably a Melissa question. They told me they sent the check, but it has not been processed yet. They mailed it 20 days ago. Who can I email about it? Okay. Um, those are handled through our business office and accounts receivable. I don't have their email with me, but if you go out to um, the scholarship page and you want to email our scholarship office, they will forward the information to them. So from outside scholarships, our, our scholarship office gets involved in terms of making sure you're enrolled and things like that. But the business office actually credits the payment. The cashiers are picking up checks. They are picking up the mail. It just isn't as frequent as it is when we're on campus. So. If you send it through the scholarship office, we will get it to the right person. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, Mel is asking, and I think we sort of addressed this question before, but uh, let's touch on it again. What happens if Wi-Fi, uh, my Wi-Fi goes out in the middle of a quiz on Blackboard? Can, can uh, you get back in uh, when Wi-Fi, when the Wi-Fi reconnects? Generally, when students are taking an assessment and the internet connection goes out, the assessment is lost. Uh, I would encourage them, if that happens, to notify the faculty member, and I'm sure they'll work with the student to retake that assessment. Okay, that's a, a good tip. Thank you, Michael. Um, Jason is saying, when will I be able to receive MC book credits uh, to buy my textbooks and other materials? Um, book credits should be starting within the next week. What happens with the book credits is any money that you have left over in your financial aid that um, isn't paying for your tuition and fees will be made available to you to start um, buying your books at the bookstore. So we're advancing you that money and then the charges go on your account and we pay them back. And I believe that is starting next week, which is a week before school begins. And it lasts uh, at least a week or two into the semester to give you time. Now with the book credit, you are able to order the books online. And if you have a book credit, you can see that when you go onto your MyMC financial aid page, you'll be able to see how much book credit you have. The bookstore has that information as well. So when you check out, you'll be able to, to say in that process, the checkout process, that you're using your book credit to pay um, for the charge. Thank you for that, Melissa. And um, 
This might be an earnest question. Um, let me see. Uh, it says most of the online classes are full. What should we do if we are on waiting list? I think we kind of answered that at the very top of the program, Ernest, but if we can go over it again. Sure, sure, sure. So thank you for the question. Um, so again, if you're on the wait list, um, check your email frequently. So again, daily, multiple times a day to see if you get notified that you've received the course. Um, that way you can then, you have 24 hours to confirm it and add it to your schedule. Um, from there, and it sounds like you've looked for other sections that may be available, but you're stating that they're all closed. Um, keep looking, keep checking the, the schedule daily to see if any openings or wait list decrease and go from there. Um, so again, I would emphasize that you check your email daily, um, but also review the schedule online to see if there's any new sections or any um, seats that open up. Great, thank Peter, you. can I and, piggyback? Uh, yeah. Please, Peter, can please. I piggyback on that for, for just a minute? Uh, as Ernest said, when classes are full, we are adding new sections within the academic areas. So please, if you're a student who's on a wait list for an online class, keep checking that class schedule. We are adding sections as needed. Thank you, Michael. And uh, since I have you here, um, uh, Deborah is saying, I'm having trouble accessing and locating Blackboard Collaborative Ultra from MC Blackboard. My classes are now loading as well. Uh, if, if they're in Blackboard, there should be a link that the faculty members place there for Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. If they're still having trouble, I would encourage them to call the Blackboard Help Desk, and that number is embedded within the Blackboard courses, and they'll help you find that information and get you started. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so check out the Blackboard page to find out their, their phone number and uh, reach out to them to see if, if that is um, something that you need to do. Um, Tanya, uh, I think we talked a little bit about mm -hmm. this, but uh, for students with disabilities, um, um, how, how do they request and receive ac uh, accommodations? Sure, it's a great question. Um, so one, I, I would encourage them to, to go to the uh, orientation I mentioned last, uh, that will be he held next week. But also, when you go to the DSS website, if you scroll down, you'll see information there about how to complete an intake. And an intake is just an opportunity for the student to say, I'm here, I have a documented disability, um, and I have some materials that I want to share so that the counselor can work with that person and identify what are the accommodations that are appropriate for that individual student. So one of the things I'm super excited about is in the last few years, we have really um, made some automated features available to students so that they can, from their home, upload that information, um, that material, that documentation onto the website. Then once it's received, it will be processed, it will be assigned to a counselor, and that DSS, and I keep saying DSS, which stands for Disability Support Services Counselor, will review the documents, they will reach out to the students much better. and schedule a time. with the way you talk. I need your permission. Oh, Sorry. somebody is um, <laughs> photobombing. I see, that wasn't me. Um, so the DSS counselor would then reach out to the student and um, schedule a time to meet. They will review the documentation, again, determine what are the appropriate accommodations, and then they will create a letter for the student. The student will decide if they want to utilize those um, supports, if they want to use the accommodations, they would then share that letter with their faculty members. And I say if the student wants to, because some courses um, may be uh, set up in a way that the student needs accommodations and some may be set up in a way that the student decides, I really don't need the accommodations for this course. Now that we're Great. You know, pretty much fully online, most students are going to have a consistent way in which they're experiencing education. So just quickly, just um, to submit that information and the council will work with them. 
Perfect. I well, I think that is it. That that's yeah. That's all the time that we have today. I want to thank all the viewers for tuning in and watching. Uh, we certainly learned a lot of uh, valuable um, information. Thank you to our guests, and uh, we'll see you next time.